Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are gonna create positions for the spawn locations. And let me just show you what this means. It's one step close in the right direction. We spawn our character, but now we can possess that character, which is pretty awesome. And you can possess player one or player two. I'm just showing you me possessing player one at this point. So we're one step closer to local multiplayer. Anyways, the first thing you wanna do is dive into your code, go to your fighter game, uh, your game mode, your fighter game, game mode.h. You might have named it something else. But we worked on it last episode and we did this. Uh, what we need to include now is this enum. Now, this enum, in short, allows us to, um, allows the player to select multiple different characters. Uh, it will make sense later on down the road. But um, traditionally, if you've got some background in code and you, but you're still a novice, you might think, why don't we use an if else statement? If it's this character selected, else don't select it, look at the next character and it'll go if else, if else, or if else, else until it finds the correct character. That's a lot of um, code, a lot to read, it's unnecessary. A much cleaner way to for character selection is using an enum. And we're making this a blueprint type so we can use it in blueprints. And uh, just once you've done this, you wanna uh, build and make sure it builds successfully and you wanna save, make sure everything matches up. One other thing you can do while we're here, in your generic fighter game character.h or your fighter game character.h, whatever you named it, just attach this in the relevant spot as well. And um, make sure, make uh, leave it as a comment for now. This We're gonna be using this in the next episode, but you might as well add this. And basically this allows you to transfer between characters. So right over here, we're creating a function so that we can select multiple characters. And now in the game, if you want to transfer between characters, we'll be using this, but we don't activate this just yet. We'll get to it later. Just save it and make sure it compiles successfully. Once you've done that, we can move on to the next phase, which is Unreal. We're done with code for the day. We can di we're gonna just dive into the default game mode BP. Uh, mine's in content, it's here, and we're gonna open it up. Right, so last time, we, in the last episode, we did this, which is the event graph. Uh, nothing's changing here, so we're just gonna move on. One thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new function and we're gonna call it determine character. And then compile and save once you've made uh, this function by just pressing plus and giving it a, an appropriate name. Just to delete that for now, go back here. So once you've done that, go back to your spawn player. This is what we did last time, but we're gonna change one thing to it. So you had something else here, but now we wanna replace it with determine character, the function we've just created here. And all you have to do is right click and type in determine character and there you have it. And once you've got determine character selected over here, you can change the order around based on what you think is neater. And I prefer to have spawn transfer here and actor here. I renamed this to actor, but make sure it is actor and it is a circle to make sure it is the right thing. The other thing I do in the output section is I change it by clicking over here and I name it based on our character game, which would, it might be generic fighter game character, or in this case, fighter game character. And I call it character reference. Allows us to reference our character. And then you just connect these things as you see when appropriate, exactly as you did before. The only extra thing we're doing now beyond that is the possession. And the possession is quite simple. You click over here, and you type in uh, possession, P-O-S-S-E-S-S. -S 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 and you have to deselect this tick to see it. And click possession, control Z. And you can just connect the appropriate parts. Get player control is fairly basic. That's the target and the end pawn would be the character reference. And at the bottom here we'll do the exact same thing except we won't connect this just yet because we haven't set up player two properly yet with all the keys. So you can just leave it like that and then compile and save. And you should be a four way. Now we can dive into the uh, the function that we called over here, and we can go into a bit more detail. We've got the spawn transform and actor that is the input, as we can see here. Spawn transform and actor, perfect. And we are connecting it to the relevant parts, and we are exi exiting with the character reference, as we can see we have here. So the first thing you want to do for your first character is an inu. That's the enum we created in our code. So if it compiled successfully, you A for way, just click over here, type in switch character e class enum, which is a 
thing we just made control Z control Z and you can leave it on your default character which is the mannequin or I want, in this case I'm going to switch it to the ebot if we change to the mannequin compile save and now you can see now with the mannequin both characters have selected the mannequin if we escape and we change this to the export compile save play we are the export and so we can basically change the character outside of the game like this and in the next episode we'll be able to change this in game so this would be and and the, this needs to connect your ve default needs to connect to a spawn actor so you click on this you just type in spawn actor and we are going to use hold on and say spawn spawn actor Ooh, make sure this is ticked on it makes it a lot easier to find the right thing spawn actor from class and you can select the class and you can choose the side scroller character or you can if you've got the y bot or x bot you can just type x bot or y bot and choose the bp version and you then you a4 away and then besides for that you just click on the drop down menu so that the owner is visible and you can connect this where appropriately the spawn transform the actor in the appropriate spots and then you can just click over here and say return node return node add return node and you just connect it like that and there you have it compile and we are set and you'll notice that we have no errors everything's working perfect there's one more thing we need to do quickly so we don't skip anything the last thing you want to do is click on your class defaults and you want to change your default pawn class to none if you have it on something else like side scroll the character that it might be on it will create a third person and you don't want that you want it to use um, one of these spawn locations so just set the default pawn class to none and by doing that compiling saving and playing you'll use one of the two character spawn points and we're one step closer Hope you enjoyed this tutorial on spawn points. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.